Hey everybody, welcome. Deepak Saini joins us, a flow well mentor and health coach. We're super excited to dig into the topic of why health coaches should partner with doctors to grow their practice. So Deepak, why should a health coach partner with a doctor? Well, uh, a great question. Again, thank you for having me back uh, as well for to help other coaches in the community. Number one, I think, you know, it's it's a way for you to get, well, business clients. I mean, I think ideally, you know, probably, maybe not necessarily, but let, let's just say probably all of us want to just run our own successful business and be abundant with abundant amount of clients, et cetera. That's not always the case. And we'll probably have other topics on, on that and uh, as, as in the future. But, you know, partnering with a doctor can be a way to fill in the gaps with your own practice, or maybe even you have your still your regular job from before and you want to you know, add, uh, you know, just partnering with the doctor is like your side thing or whatever. So it's definitely a way, a potential way for you to get, have busier, have more hours and then hence uh, generate more income. If I could just speak at the same time to the flip side, why would doctors want to partner with a health coach? Now we're seeing uh, a growth uh, in that for sure. We're becoming more aware and more understanding the last few years that they don't actually know it all. Uh, they'll be the first to admit they don't know anything about nutrition. They don't know anything about like sleep. Now I'm saying they don't know anything, but they weren't trained that way. Right. And we don't have to go down the path of, you know, the limitations of the medical system or anything like that, but more and more doctors, especially ones that have their own clinics or pr private practice are became, becoming more open to having other members of their team. And that could be other healthcare providers as well, including health coaches for mostly the accountability and the follow-up. Doctors don't have time, even in private practice, to meet with a, a patient or a client, you know, once a week, once every two weeks, especially if it's a high volume practice. And that's where the health coach can come in, you know, be the accountability partner, check that they're following through with their medications or their prescription or whatever. Maybe it could be exercise. It could be diet related, what have you. And that's, you know, why it's also beneficial uh, to the doctors. And to be quite honest, you know, and just, just so everyone knows, you know, you got to get your head around this. The doctors are going to charge client X and you're going to get paid some smaller amount to that. And that's to cover their overhead and everything like that. But that's totally fine if that can fit for your, you know, what you're looking for in a partnership and you, and what you're looking for a revenue on a per hourly basis, et cetera. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's also a moneymaker in a sense for the doctors because they can offer more services, retain clients and still make margin because they charge your time out more than they pay you. So, yeah, it makes a ton of sense that the doctors are looking for that accountability support. And I mean, it drives outcomes, right? Which is at the end of the day, what everybody's looking for and people need the help because they get a list, they get five minutes with the doctor and it's kind of like, well, all right, I, no one's here to help me actually make this change in my life and, and kind of identify the root causes of why I might not be able to actually follow this treatment or, uh, you know, care plan that is prescribed to me. What is the biggest hurdle when approaching a doctor to inquire about partnership that a health coach must overcome? Yeah, I think the biggest hurdle is, is, is actually, from my experience, is just getting your foot in the door, getting even that conversation you know obviously uh most doctors are going to have you know some sort of gatekeeper be an office manager or the or the receptionist or something just to even get in their time to even have that conversation to what you could offer so i mean i don't really do that this much anymore but you know pre-covid you know four or five years ago again in my local area um you know i literally you know pound the pavement so to speak uh for me that didn't mean actually walking around that meant like calling private clinics so where i live you know uh the public system doesn't allow health coaches and, and that sort of thing so it would be you know private clinics and where they wanted to to incorporate that and you know you got, you got to be used to rejection i think if running your own business um you know you have to be used to that uh rejection and you know you get one phone call for every 30 that outreaches that you do or maybe even more and then of all those phone calls maybe one person will want to have a second and let's talk about it more so you just have to get your head wrapped around that the other part of that too is making sure that you have uh proper credentialing you know uh there's a lot of certifications out there. Some are better than others. I'm not going to comment on on those, but I will say one thing, particularly in the U.S. and and I think um, this is I think the U.S. leads in a lot of ways. So this is certainly uh, the U.S. is leading in this regard. Um, there is a certification uh, national board certified health and wellness coach. 
a lot of uh, clinics are looking for that designation. That doesn't mean if you don't have that, you can't get a job as we're describing, but a lot of them are more and more are starting to look for that designation, which means A, not only do you have the coaching expertise and know how to do accountability and, and uh, facilitate change and all the stages of change with your clients, et cetera, all the coach speak, but you also have a fundamental baseline knowledge of medical uh, terminology, uh, et cetera, uh, as well. So again, you don't, I, I don't live in the US. I do have that designation uh, and it is something that's looking for. And also at some point, not yet, but sometime in the near future, health coaching will probably be an insurance billable code and the uh, national board certified health and wellness coach certification will probably be the leader in that. So for the company, your doctor, your physician, or whatever, uh, clinic that you might be working for might require that so they can bill through insurance. So just something to, for people to think about and look into on their own. It's actually already happened. There's five codes that got released last year. Uh, oh, did that happen? Okay. 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 I'm not, I'm not so up, on, uh, up on that. Yeah, it's so, an exciting yeah. time to be a board certified health coach mainly because yeah, you can start to uh, be reimbursed through the physician's relationship with the insurer or, you know, set yourself up direct. Um, for coaches who approach physicians about their offer and the, uh, you know, the front front desk or whomever the gatekeeper is says, well, what's a health coach? And why would that be beneficial to the practice? What should a health coach be prepared to be able to, to demonstrate in order of to uh, communicate the value that they would be bringing to that practice and the patients it serves. Yeah, great question. I'm gonna I'm gonna answer in two parts. So part one, do your research like anything, right? If you were going for a job interview for whatever your job was or is, you would do your research on the company. So check out the clinic. They usually have you know about us, our staff, and see who's there. So say you're super awesome in nutrition. And that's your main thing. If they already have a nutrition on board, the chance of them even returning your call unlikely unless they're actually looking to expand and then they're probably going to advertise for that. So one, I think it's important to have a modality of things you can do. Uh, but I think just the coaching itself, just forget about your specialty of movement or nutrition or sleep or whatever, but just, you know, being a good coach, the coaching skills is really important. And so do your research. That's number one. But number two, if the receptionist or whoever, you know, you really need to understand how to position yourself again if you have other skill sets as well but also what does a coach do you know i help your clients or patients you know follow your plan so they have greater success they have more accountability so they're more satisfied with your services complete your practice round out your services you know you got to talk about not what it's in for you you want a job you want to make money what's it in for the doctor or the the clinic or the, you know, the, the, the team that runs the clinic, you know, make it how you benefit them. Like it always should be, right? It's always about the other person, not about yourself. And part of that also is knowing your message. You know, you don't, can't be blabbering, you know, uh, sure practice is good and you got to make a lot of phone calls. Like I just said a few minutes ago, but you got to have your 30 second, you know, uh, value add dial down. And even if that means you got to read it from a script the first time you call or whatever, like you got to be succinct because if you sound like, you know, you're kind of stumbling over your words and that sort of thing, then, you know, they're, how serious are they going to take you, especially if they don't know, right? It's one thing if somebody's like, oh, I know about this health coaching and I've heard about, it. I went to a conference and I know this is, but how does it fit? That's one thing. It's if it's like, I don't know what you're talking about. Like, why, why did you call? That's another thing altogether. So you need to be succinct. So practice in front of the mirror, whatever. I'm not going to give those kind of tips right now, but you know, be succinct with your messaging and the value add that you will bring to the clinic. Mm -hmm. How much time do you think a coach needs to invest on a weekly basis in order to effectively acquire partners and nurture them to drive the referrals that one would be looking for? Yeah, great question. You know, I think it depends. It's going to be, a, th that answer is going to be, dependent of independent of everyone themselves, right? Like what else you have going on in your life? Can you dedicate the time? One thing I will say is that this can be a long process. This is what I found for myself is by the time you get to the first person, I'll leave a note for the doctor or a message. And then you don't hear, you know, you, you don't want to be calling every day because you don't want to be the annoying person, but you know, give it two weeks, then follow up, then a week. This can be a process that takes months before you even get to actually talk to the doctor or, you know, maybe a decision maker. So you got to keep that in mind as well. And everyone's going to have different response time. So I would say, you know, if this is something you want to really fill in your gaps, or this is your entry point into coaching, I'll start here while I 
build out my own practice and my own clientele, you know, then you have to put the time in. Maybe it's two hours a day, one hour a day. Maybe it's all day Friday and I'm just making calls and, you know, I'm going to do my research on this time, get my list of local clinics or clinics in a certain geographic area, what have you. And then I'm just going to make calls one after another, bang, bang, bang. Uh, for me personally, I mean, again, teach their own. I found that the most effective. I'm an introvert by, by, by nature. So I'd have to kind of get myself sort of like psyched up again, you know, I'm used to, you, you get used to it, but I still don't take rejection, uh, you know, super well. So make that first phone call. Okay, great. And then I just, once I started, I'd be on a roll. The next call got easier. The next call got easier. So then I would just do like 20, 30 calls all at one time. I might do some research ahead of time and I do it all and batch it all in one time and then do follow up, you know, and, and peer out and track it all, you know, build yourself a spreadsheet or whatever and track who I talked to, what time, what did they tell me? You know, it's like, oh, the doctor's away. I'll pass it on to him. Make a note of that because you don't want to follow up when the doctor's still away. Then you're just annoying, right? So, and don't call him the day he gets back or her he gets back because they're buried, you know? So then you, you so once you gather all this piece of interest and build your spreadsheet out, so, you know, almost like a Gantt chart and, uh, and then you know when to follow up in a systematic a way that makes sense. Mm -hmm. What do you think is the possibility for partnership with clinics or practices that are outside of your geographic location? Do you think that the physical nature is a requirement in order to be an effective partner to the patients of a practice that you partner with? I think it's going to depend. So pre-COVID, I would say it was almost, they would almost want in person, like nearly 100%. Like, you know, this, I'm just going, this is just Deepak's experience. During COVID, obviously that opened up and people were way more open to virtual. And I had, you know, some partnerships like this, all virtual. Now that we've kind of come the other side and, but people are more used to a hybrid type of thing. I had a conversation with a place locally and again, here goes to the, line, to the, the time distance, the duration it sometimes takes. We had conversations pre-COVID. It ended up not happening. They've recently reached back out to me almost four years later saying like, hey, let's still have a conversation. So we had a meeting. They want the initial conversation with the client, the first one, to be in person. And everyone afterwards can be virtual. They're totally fine with that. So you're going to find everything in between. So there's no right or wrong. There's no hard, fast rule. But people are and clinics are more open to virtual now because the doctors themselves, a lot of doctors now are doing telemedicine or doing virtual. So why wouldn't they have people on their team do that as well? So you're seeing it more and more uh, for sure. Yeah. What type of information do you need to request from the doctor as a health coach to be able to coach their patients effectively and maintain continuity between what you're advising or guiding clients towards that ensures alignment with the care plan or treatment plan that is prescribed? Yeah, great question. So whether you become on as an employee or you come on as a contractor and everything in between, uh, maybe you're the sole person, maybe you're one of 20 coaches, whatever. I think the key, and this, is, this has always been my experience, is you are part of the team, regardless of how you get paid or how you get compensated. You're part of the team. You have access to you know, the records management system. When your appointment comes up with Bob, you know, as you should do for any coaching session, whether you're a client or not, you should do a little prep right before or, you know, or sometime, you know, be before and go through and see what's the latest that Bob saw, the doctor, Bob saw the naturopath, Bob saw the dietitian, whoever's part of the team and get an up to date of what's current since the last time you saw Bob, or if it's the first time you're seeing Bob, you know, get a kind of spend a little bit more time and get their whole history. So you can talk intelligently about them like, oh, you know, I see you had the shoulder thing. You know, is that something that the doc's working on? Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, do you know their history, right? That builds trust, that builds rapport. So you should totally be part of the record management system. So you can go in and have, you know, remote access and you can check it in all, all the time. If you don't, if the doctor doesn't want to share with you, I'd be kind of suspicious of that. How, how can you be effective as a coach if you don't know all the history, uh, including the health history? You know, so again, and of course, you're going to sign, uh, you know, the HIPAA laws and you know, all those type of paperwork. And even if your focus is, let's just say, let's, you know, very simple example. Say your focus is only working with this client or patient on sleep and let's say we're super simple, just sleep. Okay, great. You should know. Now, even though you can't talk medical things with them, right, you should know what their blood pressure is, what their cholesterol levels are, if they have any injuries. Like you should have a complete picture so you can shape your 
your recommendations around sleep to the whole person. Mm -hmm. So I think that's key. Yeah, definitely. How much detailed knowledge do you feel like a health coach needs to have if they're not board certified and in order to be able to effectively support a physician and, or, uh, you know, an allied health professional in delivering those outcomes? Yeah. So I, I, what I would say, first of all, is, you know, for all coaches, know your, your scope of limitations from a professional point of view and just from your own knowledge. Don't pretend to be what you're not. You know, that whole make it till you, you know, fake it till you make it like we're talking about people's lives and their well-being and their health. Let's not do that. Okay. So know where your strengths are, know what you're good at and position yourself as, as such, and don't try and pretend not to be. Now, as I mentioned a few minutes ago, more and more clinics are looking to be for board certified coaches. I don't necessarily think that's necessary. I think it's a jive, you know, you need to be a good fit with the clinic, with the doctor, with the team, how they like to work with their uh, patients, their clientele, and where you fit in that. I think that's more important and what you bring. You don't necessarily need to be board certified. It's just a nice added bonus for insurance purposes. And, and, and I think more clinics are going to start to look for that as a leading designation. But if you have, you know, five other certifications of other things, that doesn't mean you can't help someone or can't help that clinic. It's just, you know, you got to kind of weigh it all together. Yeah. 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 That, that makes total sense. What do you think is the biggest selling point for coaches who now have a conversation going, what do they need to have in their toolkit to be able to present to a physician or a decision maker at a practice in order to seal the deal? I think it's key and you probably should have, even if it's just, you know, friends and family or, you know, I'm going to assume, let's say you're a relatively new coach. You know, you should have some experience working with people and some certifications, you know, just because, you know, you lost a hundred pounds doesn't make you a weight loss expert necess necessarily, right? So you need something that you can hang your hat on. And where I'm going with this is also some testimonials. So you can share, you know, well, you know, I worked with Susan and, you know, she had this going on and I didn't, I didn't, you know, her, she worked on that with her primary care physician, but I helped her do this and position and explain so that the, the doctor or, or the, the team can see how you fit into their practice and really sell the features that I mentioned earlier, you know, accountability, sticking with the plan that they prescribe, you know, do you want greater success with your patients? Have you ever noticed that, or do you quite often see that, you know, you, you tell your patients that they should do this and this, and then they don't really follow through. Yeah. Most of my client, most of the patients don't, Well, what if somebody met with, you know, you know, once a week or every second week and kept them accountable like, Oh yeah, that sounds really good. Right. You got to position yourself to what you can add to their practice to make them more successful. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Is Deepak, is there anything else that you feel like a health coach needs to know or needs to have in uh, the back of their mind as they think about approaching this channel as a way to grow their business and clientele base? Yeah, I think unless you have some easy in or know someone already, it's, it's not... It, it can be a long grind. Like I'm not saying you can't first call and get in somewhere. Uh, and there's certainly, you know, job boards and stuff like that where you can look, look for these type of roles, uh, et cetera, but it can be a long grind. That's really my exp experience. And, uh, again, doctors are busy. Clinical owners are busy. Just be prepared for it. And if this is an avenue you want to go, then just be prepared for the time. But I think ultimately, and, and, and teach their own, but ultimately most coaches that I talk to, you know, I know personally, or that I've talked with want to build their own business. So just view it as, okay, this is something maybe short term uh, while I'm building my business and can fill in the gaps, uh, uh, that sort of thing. And then my second point is don't be hesitant to go look outside. It doesn't necessarily have to be like a medical practice. What about a chiropractic office that wants to include more things or even a, 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 a massage uh, therapy studio or maybe they also have a physiotherapist or something like that and you add the nutrition piece of that if you have certifications and, and that you know so think outside the box it's not just medical doctors mds it could be uh, broader and you know i have partnerships with people that with with doctors and all they do is stem cells but they want to add lifestyle into it so, and or they do only regenerative medicine but they want to add lifestyle factors as well so like just think it's a bigger box than you probably think mm, awesome advice thank you back and do you can find, if you're listening, uh, Deepak on our website to uh, meet with him. Uh, Deepak, how can somebody best follow you uh, through social channels or digital channels? 
Yeah, I'm pretty much everywhere. Uh, LinkedIn's probably my biggest uh, following or, or Facebook, uh, whatever. I'm sure my links will be somewhere in there on the website. So yeah, happy to reach out, happy to have a conversation with any you know new and budding coaches and uh, happy to share the trials and tribulations of starting your own coaching business as well. Awesome. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you for having me again.